Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody, including those that are still walking in in our in-person Bible study. I say good evening again to each and every last one of you. If you could, real quickly, come in, say hello. Don't be mean. Speak to somebody. Let somebody know uh, that you are glad to be in the Bible study setting that is uh, Antioch Primitive Baptist Church. We love God here, and we are a people that are striving to be the hands, the heart, and the feet of Jesus Christ. So tonight, we don't want to start tonight's lesson any different than we have in the week's past. Tonight, we'll be still dealing with um, being born again of the Spirit. <coughs> and tonight, we're going to go deeper into chapter number three of John, uh, that we may be able to fulfill the reason why we've come here tonight, satisfy our spirit man, that we may be able to leave here better than we came. So as you come in, let, let somebody know that you're in here. Hey, Sister Kia, how you doing? Hey, Sister Jasmine, how are you? Sister Bertha, how are you tonight? God bless you, Sister McAfee, Sister Stewart, God bless you all. We thank you all for chiming in, as you always do each and every week. I think I'm waiting on two of my others to get here, one of which may not come depending on how dark it gets outside really quickly. Uh, put on driving rain. Well, if two or three be gathered. Him said he'll be a God in the midst, and I'm cool. Um, with doing less talking than you will tonight. Uh, you do all the talking. <laughs> no, but we're going to go into our lesson tonight. If you're still joining us, hey, bro, that's my big brother from Huntsville, uh, my big blood brother, uh, Tim Clark. How you doing, Mother Morris? I'm doing great. Mother Bird, how are you this evening with your faith outfit on? May God bless you. How you doing, Sister Fennell? God bless you. And don't let the fir that time I seen you in person be the last time I see you in person, okay? I know you be online holding our online section down. But Pastor want to see you so I can elbow you, you know, uh, fist bump you, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Tonight, we're going back to John chapter number 3. We're still dealing with the new birth, um, that of being born again. And I said, I did, didn't I say we was waiting on somebody? You said two or three. That's what you said, ain't it? Come on in here, Maurice. <laughs> Jesus said he waiting on you. <laughs> him waiting on him. <laughs> no, tonight we're going to deal with uh, John chapter number three. We're still in John chapter number three, um, dealing with the new birth. Uh, we're talking about. And we had started last week talking about a man uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Uh, we all know this story. We know that Nicodemus, um, being a Pharisee, a leader of the Jews, or a high-ranking official of the Jewish uh, nation, at this point, he shows up to God at night, and he asks his teacher, Rabbi, he says, um, you know, how can one be born again? And um, this is where we're going to pick up tonight um, that we don't labor too long in the place uh, that we've already labored. Boy, you ran in here like you was doing the starting lineup for some football, basketball team or somebody. I don't know what you just did. Anyway, welcome Maurice Miller, uh, Minister Maurice Tony. I'm sorry. Good evening. Excuse Lord. my tardiness. God bless all of you all. Jesus wept. Uh, he did. He he did indeed. That's what the Bible says. Uh, John chapter three. We talked about Nicodemus, how he comes to Jesus at night. And as I was reading uh, from last week until this point, um, dealing with Nicodemus, I want to hone in on his spiritual state. Uh, we talked around why he goes to Jesus at night. We talked about how, according to uh, dealings, Jesus and the Pharisees didn't have any dealings with each other. 
But what I did learn, Sister Jasmine, is in my studies, I found out that while they didn't have any dealings with each other and they often had run-ins, in this particular text, the reason why Nicodemus shows up to Jesus is because according to history, this was of the time where um, priests and those teachers would, would study. They would get together and um, they would do their learning and their uh, gathering of their knowledge. And so Nicodemus chose Mother Morris the best time to go to them because they were already in the mind of teaching. Um, he, they, they would have already been in the mind of answering questions. But what gets me, as we talked about this last week, when we talked about how the, the nighttime could have been a depressing time for him, it could have just been a troubling time for him. As I was reading, that becomes more and more prevalent because at this moment he's a Pharisee who believes in what he's seen Jesus do. And while he's a Pharisee, one who should oppose everything that Jesus is doing, he's battling with his spirit man between what to believe, or not what to believe, but to believe or to keep his position, to believe or to um, worry more so about who it is that he is in the Jewish rank and forfeit the blessing and the benefit of uh, having and ha uh, having that relationship with Jesus Christ in such a way where um, he would not have to sneak. He would not have to um, go around the unusual times in which he goes. Um, but nonetheless, when he goes, he goes with this question, and the question is, how can a man be born again when he is old? The answer to the question isn't a physical answer where you have to re-enter into the, the mother's womb and be born again, but it still carries a physical and spiritual connotation when you talk about being born again by the Spirit because the Bible strictly speaks that John goes and he's uh, preparing the way. And what he's telling them is, I baptize with water, but there's going to come one that's going to baptize with fire and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible speaks of many passages where God will pour out his spirit uh, upon his people. Um, and at this point, uh, we're dealing with Nicodemus coming to Jesus, Jesus telling him how Nicodemus asking the question and Jesus telling him that the truth of it all is unless one is born of water and of the Spirit. This is where we left off last week, Sister Bertha, that baptism is very important, both physical in the water and both uh, spiritual in the man. Um, we've often talked many a times that according to our denomination, what we believe is that uh, baptism is the outward showing of the inward change. Uh, we're showing everybody on the outside what has really taken place on the inside. But what Jesus does bring us knowledge and understanding to is that baptism is necessary. Baptism is necessary to even be connected to the Holy Spirit because unless you are baptized, according to the Scripture, with water and the Holy Spirit, then one part just won't do. It has to be both a physical cleansing as well as a spiritual cleansing, even though you're not going back into the womb and being birthed all over again. The, the, the birth, the water birth that we, we know, it really symbolizes um, that of the womb of the mother and the fluids by which we all flow from and through to be birthed into the world. Um, that's what we that's what the teacher of this lesson was trying to get us to. That's what we have to understand. According to our lesson is what Nicodemus is asking. Is it impossible for somebody who's been living a life of sin to be cleansed? Is it possible for somebody who's been living a life in opposition to Jesus Christ, is it possible that their life can be changed? And the question, I mean, the answer to that is yes. The question is surely you can be, 
but there must be a wanting, a desire on the inside of you. Nicodemus went, Mother Morris, with a desire. He needed to know the answer to this question. And he needed to know so much so that he wasn't going to wait till the next day to ask Jesus. He was going to catch Jesus in the moment where he was studying, in the moment where he was, he was going to be teaching. And when Nicodemus shows up, Nicodemus shows up and talks to him as rabbi. Y'all want to know why he already knows him as rabbi? If y'all remember, um, at the crucifixion, uh, when Joseph comes and asks for the body of Jesus Christ, Nicodemus is there as well. Nicodemus knows who Jesus is. This is why we, we labored on the part last week of why Jesus looks at him and says, aren't you a teacher? Why don't you know this? Because it is of requirement that if you are who you say you are, you need to know what you say you know. And that's why we as believers ought to study to show thyself approved because when we go out and when we prophesy and when we speak and when we lay hands and when we do, if we do any of it in error, it's not going to be done right. And those that are looking on will hope will be deterred to even believe that it can happen because you're not operating in rightful operation and functionality with the Holy Spirit. And most of this comes from the fact that we want to come to Jesus. We come to Jesus. We give the preacher our hand and we say, you know, we want Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. But the truth of the matter is, in order for God to be your Lord and Savior, in order for the spirit to be in you, there has to be a reflection of it that shows on the outside to people. I'm not saying you got to be perfect, Jasmine. I'm not saying you got to be perfect since birth. But what I'm saying is when you are in the spirit, while you may not be perfect, the spirit perfects you. Y you understand what I'm saying? You, you, th that's why it's very important not to operate in and of yourself. Because if you allow the Holy Spirit to have full reign, the Holy Spirit, uh, Minister Tony, had you saying stuff that you didn't even, you didn't think of. It wasn't on your sermon. You didn't write it down. It, you're just in the groove. You're walking in the spirit. The spirit is coming out, and you even sit down when it's all said and done like, I didn't even study that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't even go there, but that's what the Bible, that, that's how the Bible testifies and witness to itself when it says that the Holy Spirit will bring back to our remembrance those things that, that we may forget because as human flesh, we will forget dealing with this world that we live in. However, when you are truly of the Spirit, and I think Sister Bertha said this when we first started talking about the Spirit, when you're truly of the Spirit, where, wherewith you may not be perfect, when you sin and when you fall short of the glory of God, the Holy Spirit will convict you some terrible. I mean, you, it will get, he will get you all the way together. And if you don't want to testify to it being the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit has a wisdom of itself that when you deny it, it flees from you. Don't deny the Holy Spirit. Anybody got something? You go ahead. You got something? Anybody got something to say? Um, I guess as we as we jump into this, I might as well go ahead and and say it now. Nicodemus has has an issue, mm -hmm. and the issue that he has, you got to watch this. He has uh, an issue of a head problem, mm -hmm. not a heart problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a head problem, not a heart problem. Yeah, because if you really would dig into what what I'm saying. Uh, we always quote the text, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Do you not realize that the, the, the substance of the text is not the actual mind of Christ? You cannot handle the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. But you can have the heart of Christ. This is true. Right? And so, so the biggest thing that we have to, that, that we must understand as us being the Nicodemuses of today is that a lot of the things uh, that we're facing and that we're going through, like I said, is not a head problem, it's a heart problem. Mm -hmm. Our hearts are not right. Whatsoever man think is in his heart, mm -hmm. that is he. So Nicodemus is very book smart. And, and when you get, in, and, and this, uh, this is why it's starting to make sense to me now, 
when Jesus says what is flesh is flesh and what is spirit is spirit, what Jesus was trying to get Nicodemus to understand is that you got you got the education of it. You correct in all your education. But now what I'm trying to get you to is a level of empowerment now mm -hmm. to take what you know and be able to operate in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the biggest thing or the biggest um, issue that we have within the church is that we know it all, quote unquote. We know it very well. We can quote it. We'll shout it down when we hear it. But the next thing is now we got to operate in it. And what Jesus was trying to get him to understand was um, it's, it's time to uh, operate in your spirit. The biggest um, thing about it is that uh, the biggest struggle that we go through is flesh and spirit. When we conquer our flesh, the things of the spirit will become second nature. Mm -hmm. Healing won't look weird to you if it's second nature. It'll just be another common occurrence. Mm -hmm. But in order to get there, we got to have that empowerment moment. And the only way you get that empowerment moment is when you recognize the difference between operating in the flesh and operating in the spirit. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Let her get get her get her another mic. Let her see what it's like. Go ahead, sis. I'm about to say just talk. There you go. When he <laughs> when Minister Tony said what he said. You know, um, Sunday, I was at home, and I was pressing. I was pressing. I was pressing trying to get here the Sunday before that and the Wednesday before that. And um, I, I, I was just pressing and pressing, but it seemed like, you know, the, the struggle that I was within, I, it seemed like I just couldn't, couldn't get a hold of it. And with what he just said, and you were all over me in Sunday school. And, <laughs> and I just, you know, my comments, they was just, and, and, and I pressed, and I pressed in, and I was able to not just hear the word, I listened to the word because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me on how to handle this particular situation mm. that I'm dealing with, you know, because it's something all new to me. And when you were talking and I was like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm typing everything in, I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, I'm, 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 I'm crying to God. Um, I had already texted the pastor and asked him to pray. But it was that, what do I have to change within me? Mm. I, it's something that I had to change. And uh, the Holy Spirit, gave, Holy Spirit gave me this today. Change will open up the ability for you to have all these choices that God have available to you. Because he gives us the free will. He gives us free will choice. But our hands are tied to those free will choices until we make the change. Mm -hmm. And it's just like what y'all was saying. I mean, Bible study last week, I'm, it, it just, just, just tore me up in a good way. All of this has just been, it's just been straightening out my, my crooked path, you know. And, and God will answer 
your prayers. You know, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and through you. And I acknowledge him tonight. And I had to point out you. You talked last Wednesday, and I was like, okay, God, you are truly on this man right here. Y'all in my business. <laughs> you know, and, and, but I didn't tell nobody. So I can't get mad at nobody. And it was like when I put the, I put a, um, I put a quote up there that said, um, we don't know, I, I, don't, I don't know what it was, we don't know how people feel or, you know what? I would not tell nobody to walk in my shoes of what I've just come out of. Mm. Marvis made that statement. She said, people say, oh, you just got to walk in my shoes. Why would you want somebody to go through the struggles you go through? Why would you tell somebody to walk in my shoes when your shoes too tight and they hurt you? But it took me to come out of myself and tell some people what was truly going on because pastor said it. Sometimes we, need, we don't want to be in your business, but we need some specifics mm -hmm. on what to pray for mm -hmm. in order to fight that battle. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just want to think. I just want to T-H-A-N-K all of you all for being obedient to the spirit because it helped me in my yes, battle and yes, my yes. struggle. So, Bertha, you said something, you used the magic word, word I love so well, and that's change. Something has to change in us. Um, this whole lesson is about being born again. Again means there was something that went astray, and we need to do it. And the thing I love about God is while we only have one life to live over here, he allows us many reset moments, moments that we can come to a place of, let me do it again. Because now what the text does not necessarily specify is that how old Nicodemus is when he goes to Jesus. But I would just want to just go with our spiritual imaginations and imagine that because he's a Pharisee and Mother Burke, because he is a high-ranking official in the Jewish nation, I would believe that he has had to put in his time. So putting in his time, I would have to believe that for this long, I think even Minister Tony said this last week, for this long, he's been of the persuasion of Pharisees' mentality. We don't deal with Jesus. Everything that Jesus is doing is against our law, and every moment we can, we're going to pick on him about it. But there had to come a place where Nicodemus knew Jesus because the plant point where he calls him rabbi is also an affirmation and a confirmation of his belief. He knew who he was talking to. He knew who this was that was going to give him this answer. Watch this. With our spiritual imagination, remember, this is a 71-member Sanhedrin tri uh, 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 nation. Also, he's going to not only, he's going to Jesus, but where Jesus is is with other teachers. Why is it, Brother Roland, does he go to Jesus and not maybe one of the other Pharisee rulers or teachers that was either with him or maybe other teachers that was with Jesus? Why did he go to Jesus in such a direct, intent type way? Go ahead, go ahead and answer that. I'm going to get you. I think the easiest way to explain that one would be is, I'm just going to use an example. If you want to drink a water that's cold, you're going to go get it out the refrigerator. All right. You're not going to go get it out the cabinet. Okay. Just that It's just like that. Speaking of water, I had a bottle of water that I opened up. And I can't find it now. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. That's the good analogy. I mean, <laughs> I mean I it's if you, if you want to know something, or if you want to know somebody, the best way to get to know somebody to go to is them. to go directly to them. Uh -huh. I mean, you can always hear the rumors. 
I can mm-hmm. always go down the street and somebody will say, hey, so-and-so did this, uh, yeah, so-and-so yeah, did that. Yeah. But is any of that true? Did you get it from the horse's mouth? Exactly. exactly. So if I want to know Jesus, I need to go to Jesus. Got you. So, so, Mother so, Burke? so let me somewhat piggyback on uh-huh. what Minister Pullen just said. Pastor, when you were talking, the, the, the same thing kept coming to mind. Nicodemus had that aha moment of I'm not going along to get along uh-huh. anymore. Mm-hmm. This man has opened up my eyes and as yep. Minister uh, Momo said, he opened up his heart mm-hmm. to actually uh, receive something that he hadn't received before. Mm-hmm. He had the knowledge That's it. and yeah. now he is, here he is, he is actually getting the spiritual awakening mm-hmm. and so he, he you know you mentioned about him being with the pharisees mm-hmm. yeah when i'm in that group i'm having those discussions uh-huh. but this man got me asking some questions and i need to get my questions answered yep so i'm going to have to go and speak to the man that can answer my questions i like that i like to go ahead go ahead so um I, and i'm just going to jump in and along with uh, what uh, Minister Pullen has said, um, Nicodemus understood. He knew what the other Pharisees know. He knows what they know because they are all in the same so life. He studied they Jesus. He studied them. Uh-huh. There's a difference between. Oh, yeah. um, I like where you're going, Rev. Uh, there's a difference between knowing a person and experiencing a person. You know, um, when you experience a person, that requires what? Relationship. That requires a moment of intimacy. That requires a moment of you being completely open and honest. Mm -hmm. And for Nicodemus to say, you know what? I know what my fellow associates know because we all studied the same law. Uh We all got to uphold the same law. I know what they know. Uh But I want to know from the man that wrote the law. I can interpret the law to my understanding, but I need to know the law according to what it was written and intended to be. Mm-hmm. When it is that you turn on the water or you get a water bill, it comes from the American Water Company, right? But the water itself comes from the Tennessee River. Okay, you missed it. Nicodemus understood the difference between the source and the resource. American water is the resource. The Tennessee River is the source, where it is that the entire body of water comes from. They just control how much is distributed to you. I know how much they know, but I need to know exactly how much God knows and exactly what it is that according to what I know and what I know, do I know what I know is what I know right. I can't say that again. And, and, and that's where, and that's where we have to, that's where the church has to get to. That's us stepping out of having religion and having a religious ex, uh, 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 exercise, quote unquote, church service. Mm-hmm. And us getting to a point in place and being vulnerable with God and saying, God, uh, open up my eyes. Pour into my spirit. Mm -hmm. Truly control and and awaken what I need to know in order to truly have a relationship with you. Because once we get to that point of of, uh, relationship and intimacy, like I said earlier, it's uh, going to be on a totally different level to where uh, things that you hear about and see and and know as miracles or, or or uh, phenomenons will just be norm- normal. It won't seem so far-fetched. But yeah. I'm going to take a phrase out of Mother uh, Burke's book, and I'll say that, that this Bible is good uh, to go through and read every scripture you want to, to know it. But if you don't apply the scripture, it, it makes no good. It's, it is of no good intent to you. 
And that's what we're talking about with Nicodemus. And Nicodem I, got, I got you from other, what Nicodemus is dealing with at this moment is that Nicodemus is dealing with a moment also where, like you said, Mr. Tony, he studied. He studied this man. But that's where I always like to put, you know, in context, religion and relationship. Because religion says, I know him. I know him by, by, by what I read. You know, about where I, oh, I, I read this, Jesus wept, okay, Jesus healed Lazarus, he called Lazarus from the grave, okay, he did. I know what he did. But Sister Bertha, I know what he did in here. It don't make no good sense, though, until I know what he did in here. When he's done it in my life, that's where the testimony comes from. That's where you can hook up with folks like Daniel in the lion's den and say, I've had a lion's den moment. I've had a moment where the king wanted to kill me and where he threw me. It was designed to kill me, but God caused it to work for my good. We, we, we got to have that mentality when it comes to the spirit to allow that thing that rules and make everything right to rule in us. Sister Tiffany said something online, and I'm going to come to you, uh, Mother uh, Morris. She said, uh, we got to look at and believe, go back to what Nicodemus mentions about Jesus and his belief. And what he mentions is, um, Rabbi, I know you are a teacher uh, that comes from God because you are doing things uh, that no other man can do. When you come to this experience where you know it, or the older saint would say, it was nobody but the Lord. When they say that, that, that wasn't just a moment for the church to go up in fire, but that was a moment for testimony. I know it was nobody but the Lord. I went to doctor, the, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood said she went um, doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, spent all she had until uh, she was broke. She had nothing else to spend, and she went. Uh, not as her last resort. Watch this. She didn't use Jesus as a last resort because as she had been going, the Bible never in, implied that Jesus ever came past her way prior to this moment. So she's spending all she had. Maybe she already knew Dr. Jesus. She just not, never knew how to get to him, could never get into the same location of him. But what she said the moment she heard he was passing through was, I'm tired of spending my money. I'm tired of going from doctor to doctor. They ain't helping me. Uh, I'll pick it back off what Mother Ricks told me Sunday. Uh, I was over there speaking with her at the church. She said it with a smile on her face. She said, you know, uh, sometimes, Pastor, when I'm not here, I'm just sick. She said, but that's all right. They tell me I need to go see a doctor. But, but, but I know a doctor. She said, I, I got Dr. Jesus, and, and he can do, and this is what really messed me up, and I, I had my Pastor Rogers laugh. She said, and he can do for me what my doctor down here can't do. I told Mother Ricks, I said, look, church is over. We're not going to do this right now. <laughs> be, 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 because that's where you have to get to. When you get to the relationship part, you're getting to the part of understanding like Nicodemus. I know that no other man can do this. That's why the hymn writer wrote, uh, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. One. The second verse was nobody can heal none of these diseases. No, not one. No, no. And it goes to point as, as well as John was doing this whole point. It's pointing back to God. Even Jesus at this point is still pointing to the kingdom. He, he's not even pointing to himself. He came to Jesus talking about rabbi. He know who Jesus is. He's seen the, the signs, but Jesus still pointing to the kingdom. Because Jesus' whole life, just like our life should be, while as Jesus is pointing to his Father, our life should be pointing to Jesus. That, that's what we should be doing, and to draw that connection. Uh, Mother uh, Morris, uh, I hope you didn't forget what you wanted to say, and then I'm going to hit on what Sister McAfee said here. Just uh, you, know. you know, I was thinking back on uh, what Minister Tony had said about our religious experience. Once you get that relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. it, you can go through the motions. You can go through the motions. And that is a religious experience, uh -huh. just, going through, just going through the motions. Because I know of God but I and, and his son, but I don't have a personal relationship. Uh -huh. But once that relationship is established, 
oh, I'm, I'm expected to have a worship experience, yeah. a yeah. praise experience. It yeah. changes from a religious thing yeah. Yeah. to a more personal thing. And that yeah. and that's from the from the heart to the mind. Mm -hmm. That it all has to become a personal, direct personal relationship. Then mm -hmm. the mindset changes mm -hmm. of recognizing uh, him as who he he is in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I you can tell me what he's done for you, and I can uh, be happy with you. But one day that I'm gonna have to have an experience of my own then I've got something to tell you that I know that I know, that I know. So, you know, it's about that religious experience versus my personal worship. That's true. And as we deal with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit wants us to have a personal relationship and, watch this, a personal encounter each and every week. I said this on Sunday, that when we come in, um, I'm going to be honest. Can I, can I be honest real quickly? The reason why many people cannot enter into his gates with thanksgiving is because they're, they, they're seeing things out of their carnal eye. And when they see things out of their carnal eye, they ain't got a lot to be thankful for. I mean, let's be honest. When they got here this morning, uh, uh, even tonight, somebody may not have got here uh, too, too good on a wing and a prayer because they gas tank was on E. It, it could have been. They, they, they might not have would have made it here. But then you have people who come to church, um, and you, you want them to have a, a something to be thankful for in the way where they're not worried about things they cannot change. And that's mostly what, we, what, what hangs us up. Most of what hangs us up is things that we just cannot change. I mean... Uh, yeah, you can change having gas in your car. You could have got up a little bit early, went to the gas uh, station, got your gas, came on to church. You could have got it Saturday night. I don't know how your routine is. But what I'm saying is there are some things in life that you just cannot change. And with the carnal eye, there's no need for you to come into a hospital for the hurting in a place where you can be healed, looking at things out of an eyesight of hopelessness. Nobody in here has ever gone to the hospital thinking that the hospital wasn't going to get them well by the time they left. You went with the intent that the doctor that would see you before you leave was going to give you something to make you better. And so you go in, watch this, with a hopeful eye. You go in with a hopeful heart. You go in saying, God, you know what? I know I'm sick now, but I'm going to see somebody that's uh, skilled in what I need them to be skilled in to help me feel better than what I feel right now. Well, my question is, Antioch and everybody joining us online, why is it that church on Sunday morning seems so dry and you got to pump and prime people to a thank you, Jesus, when a thank you should have been what they came here on because they realized that it wasn't them that woke them up. But see, here's the problem with us. Because we saw waking up out of the carnal eye, we gave credit to the alarm clock and not to Jesus. Yes, sir. That hand went up slow and fast at the same time. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you a question this way. Okay. I'm just, actually, I'm just going to say it this way. The reason why I believe that some people come in here and you have to pump and prime is because the blessings that they receive, they've taken them for granted. This is they true. assume I like that this. they're supposed to have them all the time, such as waking up every day, such uh -huh. as my body working like it's supposed to, such as a roof over my head, such as my children work, you know, behaving like it's supposed to, uh -huh. such as blase, 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 fill and dot all the way down the line. They assume that just because they've had it Monday through Friday that it's going to be there again next week, Help Monday through man. Friday. Help but it, it, don't, it don't work that way. Help Once a man is appointed to die, that's it. Help him, man. You don't know when you're going to wake up again. You don't know what the next breath is going to be. You don't know if you're just going to... And that's it. That's it. People have aneurysms all the time. People fall over and literally drop dead all the time. Come on, People man. drive down the street and don't come home all the time. But we wake up every day and we just take it for granted. Yeah. It's yeah. always, oh, oh, I got this, I got this. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have nothing. It's Jesus has got you. If you looked at your car and you would actually look and see what's holding the front end of your car together, there's no way you can say, I got here on my own. It just ain't possible. 
There are bolts holding the front of your car literally that are the size of my pinky. And you go out on the road every day and slam into potholes. Some of us ain't paying attention, run off the road. And it's that little bitty bolt that Jesus is holding together so you can get to point A to point B. Two things real quickly before Maurice and before you mother uh, Bert. So um, Sister McAfee says that yes, there's a difference between religion and relationship. That's what sets Christianity apart from others. I like that she brings it up because people, uh, there's a two-part duality thought about Christianity. Some people think that Christianity is white man's religion used to control the black people uh, to do for them what they want to do. Um, but that's not how I was raised on Christianity. I'll be honest, I was raised up in Sunday school uh, that, was, that taught me that Christianity was just that of the name given to the lifestyle. And, and, and the people who had this, this belief of wanting to be like Christ, that's what I was taught being a Christian was. I was taught that being a Christian was not a set of, of, of a cult-like uh, uh, mindset, but being a bit of Christian was just that of trying to pattern my life after Jesus Christ. And then Sister Tiffany says, because by faith we see the finished outcome or expectations by faith. And I think what she was alluding to is that many people come in and it's, it's because they, they are defeated. They come in defeated because they don't come in by faith. By faith, you already know the victory is won, the battle is fought. All I got to do is sit back and see the salvation of God. But there's a defeated mentality that, that the, the, the people of God are living under right now. There's a defeated mentality that we come in as if we've been, as if the devil has already won. But I got to, I got to deny that report because while he may win the little mini battle, he will not win the ultimate war. There is no victory for Satan by no means necessary. And for the believer, you got to know and be confident and bold in this thought alone. You are protected by an all-wise and all-knowing God that there's nothing that is to happen to you except God planned it to happen in his providential wisdom before the foundations of the world. And what he's going to do is use whatever storm you're going to experience to develop you into being whatever servant he needs you to be. That's all that this life has been. That's all this life is for. And that's all that you're going through. You're going through is so that God can get the best out of you. He can't get the best out of you if you ain't gone through nothing. Because the truth of the matter is, nobody real green can tell me about anything. You got to get your fingers dirty to tell me about life. <laughs> you got to get your hands dirty, uh, Minister Tony, to tell me about how to get through this life. Because I've been through some things in 34 years that I don't think some folks should have gone through in 34 years. But God planned all of that for a reason. Sister Bertha, I thank you on the Holy Spirit. This ain't this wasn't planned. Sister Bertha, whatever it is that you're dealing with, even in this season, what you're going through right now, I want to let you know the Holy Spirit is telling you you've been built for this. You've been built for this. The reason why you're going through what you're going through is because there's a strength that's in you that you have not known yet that God is literally trying to light up in you. He's trying to set. You know how you go to that, that the uh, 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 um, Deacon Morris, you know how you go to the uh, hot water heater and you press that button to try to ignite that fire and it, it, that pilot light and you got to keep pushing it sometime to get it to find. God is trying and he's waiting on it to ignite because what he really wants us to know is like I said Sunday, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We cannot walk around defeated. Why? Because those that are looking at us need to see us strong. They need to see us well. And my, Minister Tony, I'm not saying that we ain't going to never have some sick days. But what we need to learn how to do is go into that closet, take that medicine with God, go and get that whooping that we need to come out of that closet, put on that whole arm of God, and go out here into the hedges, the highways, and the byways, and to tell men, women, boys, and girls that there's a God that can save you if you want to be saved. And then there's a spirit that will live in you if you let them live. You understand what I'm saying? I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mother Morris. I hope you didn't forget what you were supposed to say or what the Holy Spirit wanted you to say or what you were going to say. 
I hope I didn't make you forget that. Okay, come on, say it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. I'm so, sorry, y'all. So, Pastor, I want to. I want to. I got flipped around. I want to back up to when you were talking about going to the hospital. You go to the hospital when you're sick and you expect to come out of that hospital well. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny how people won't come to church until they say, when I get myself together, uh -huh. I'm going to come to church. But you'll go to the hospital when you're sick uh -huh. and you're not together. Yeah. But you can't come to the church. Until you get yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Even the, okay, even though you're sick. Uh-huh. I, I just when I thought about that. I said, let me just ask Pastor that question, piggybacking on what you said about going to the hospital. Yes, ma'am. And Pastor, well, what you said to me about she built for this, mm -hmm. the thing that came to mind, you know that that uh, commercial about built for it tough? Yep. You built Lord tough. <laughs> I like that. You good with your words, Mars. <laughs> she said, I'm built Lord tough. I love that. I think I'm going to make a T-shirt. Uh, amen. Praise God. But no, seriously, we go ahead, Miss Miss Tony. My bad. I don't want to. I, I was just going to say, no. This is this is true. Is that? Uh, and also, real quickly, I've had two people say something. Um, one, uh, Sister McAfee says that she thinks that the dryness also comes from people uh, who don't know the God they serve. I like how she worded the God they serve, because the truth is not everybody serves the same God. You will be defeated, bro Roland, if you call on a rain god to give you some healing. I'm calling on Jesus, period. <laughs> Point blank. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, you have to know how to connect your problem with the right characteristic of the only God and not try to disseminate God into being these different personalities as if he's a God that only shows up in the condition of which you want him to rain because it's been hot too long or you want him to bring the sun out because it's been raining for too long so you pray to a sun God, you pray to a rain God, you pray to a uh, um, I don't know uh, maybe a different religion uh, um, head um, but the truth becomes it's not until you have that direct relationship with the only God um, till you come to the place of knowing that when you come into the presence of God, you should never come in as if the God that you are coming into the presence of doesn't deserve a celebration. When you come into the presence of God, you got to remember he's king. You got to remember he's Lord of lords. And you don't just go to him in a way. You, you got to remember, he's the great I am. So you don't just walk up and go into the great I am. Here's, here's the only any kind of way you can go to him. Weary, worn, and sad. But you got to recognize that he's king. And if you're recognizing that he's king, when you come, you got to bring the king something. Not just talking about bring the king uh, your material, but bring the king something. One thing I love about the king that we serve is that he really wants you to bring your problem more than he wants you to bring your money. Okay, you, so uh, you need to repeat that. I, I think I did because I don't uh, think somebody repeat that. The people the, in the back. The God that we and let, let me make sure if my volume of my phone they can hear me. The God that we serve does not care more about your money than he does the problem that you are experiencing. Because can I tell y'all how this works? Most people who are going through problems are not going to be somebody in a position to give anybody any, any type of money. God deals with the root of the issue first before he even gets you to a place of understanding why he asks you to give according to your heart as he has purpose to give according to the tenth of the Old Testament law by which we can still uh, live under, but that we are not under the pressure of. That, and we got to understand that when we deal with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants us to operate in a way that we know, as Minister Tony said earlier, we know that we know that we know, and not what we think we know, 
but we truly know it. <laughs> and we know it because we are in direct relationship with him. I'm sorry, Mr. Cone, go ahead. So to, 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 to wrap all that up and put it in a bow. Who told you to put my stuff in a bow first? She got to put something in the box. I'm, I'm, because because it's a lot to unpack, so that's that's why I got. So you gonna wrap put two gifts together right here? I'm I'm gonna put a whole right, slew listen. of them together. Go ahead. The the reason why people come into his gates without thanksgiving is because they have the mind frame of Nicodemus. I know. I know. I know church. <laughs> come on, man. I know church real good. Choir gonna sing. That deacon go sing that same prayer. Know, know what time to show up to church. I, same Sunday school lesson. It's the same mothers. Uh, it's the same women's day. It's the same youth day. It's the same uh, uh, men's day. So I know church. So I'm not going to come in with an expectation of something different because, because I've been church. going to church yeah. out of a habit. Uh huh. It's something to do. It kills, it kills a couple of hours until the game comes on. It kills a couple of hours until my beans get done and my greens is right. It kills a little time for me. Mm -hmm. So since I don't want to sit at home, I'm going to come do this because my grandmama used to make me. Yep. Because my mama used to drag me and make me come. Yep. But in order to get from Nicodemus to Peter getting out of the boat, there is something that has to happen. What has to happen? It happens with Nicodemus. He came to Jesus. He, so what that he came at night? So what that he came with a, with a group of people, but he came. Jesus, I, I, I don't know you as Savior yet, but I know you to be a teacher. So I acknowledge you as rabbi. You a teacher. So Because right now, I, 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 at the place that I'm at, I, I got to talk to you philosophical. We, we got we to... Gotta, Sword for sword, we gotta we gotta battle this thing out. We gotta match wits right here, cause this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. But if you notice a few chapters down, when it is that Jesus done uh, was uh, uh, buried and crucified and all that, he's there. And it's at that point that Nicodemus now knows him as a savior. Mm -hmm. The only reason why Peter got out of the boat was because he recognized Jesus not to be Elijah, not to be John the Baptist not to be one of the prophets, not to be Jeremiah, but he said, you're the Lord. And that's the reason why I want to get out the boat. Nicodemus says, I recognize you to be greater, and this is why I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. So the fact is, uh, um, we have to get from the place of just coming with a, uh, with a mediocre mindset of it just being church. And get to a point in place, I, there's something here that I want from God. I'm expecting him to do something. So what if the musician's not here? So what if the drummer uh, mishit a, 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 a snare drum note? So what? Uh, the usher didn't give me my program. So what? The preacher didn't preach my song and he didn't shout, hoop, and holler. I want something from God. And I know him to visit here. I know him to rest here. I know the spirit to move here. So this is why I'm coming here. I'm coming for the experience of God and not the comfort of people. Because like pastor said earlier, we bring problems. We, we focus on pains. We focus on situations. So we come with all this baggage. And there's no way for you to experience and enjoy the presence of God when you're way down. I've never known, uh, I, I've never been able to get anything in a balled up fist. This is true. Nobody can give you anything if your fist is balled up. Nobody can give you anything if your, if your mind is closed. Nobody can give you anything if your heart is not receptive. Nobody, uh, mm -hmm. the spirit can't move in you if your spirit and focus is not right. There's a story, or there, there, there's a story, or an illustration. There was a woman in church that that went to the pastor and complained about some stuff. Pastor, the deacons are sleeping, the ushers are mean, the mothers is talking about folks. He said, "Okay, 
So this one uh, Sunday afternoon, he tells her to come to church. He hands her a glass of water, and he tells her to walk around the sanctuary three times. She walks around the sanctuary. He says, um, uh, make sure you don't let any water spill. She walks around the sanctuary three times, right? Uh, he, he stops her. He says, uh, did you notice that the, uh, uh, the ushers was gossiping? She said, no. Did you notice that the deacons were sleeping? She said, no. Did you notice that the musicians hit the wrong key? She said, no. He says, why? Because I was focused on the water. You're going to stay thirsty if you're not focused to get the water. Of course, you're going to be unhappy if you're not focused on how to get joy. You're going to be mad if you're not uh, 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 expecting to have peace. Of course, you're going to be upset if your focus is off. Nicodemus said, I need to get focused. Peter said, I want to get out the boat. And I got focused. And to get out the boat, but, but when, when, when your focus is not there, when you let everything and everybody push and pull, and I know life is as crazy as it wants to be, but guess what thing about life? No matter how crazy it is, no matter how much push and pull you go through, it's still up to you to allow that stuff to affect you. It's still up to you. I can stand out in the rain all day long and get wet. That's my choice. But the moment I get tired of getting wet, I can go inside or I can open up my umbrella. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired and tired of being sick, you're going to do something about it. And the truth of the matter, the majority of the church ain't sick and tired of nothing. We just frustrated. We just agitated. We just stressing a little bit. Because if you really were, you would do something about it. For your soul's sake. Not for the comfort of people, but for your soul's sake. I, th I think that's all the gifts I got can unwrap and wrap up. Make sure your microphone is. You know, when we were talking about people coming in, and some of them come in with a defeated mentality, I thought about uh, maybe two Wednesdays ago when uh, Tiffany did an illustration with me, and she was talking about somebody uh, in the church had asked them to pray for, asked her to pray for them. And she said, if truth be known, I was going through something at the time myself. Mm -hmm. But she knew, even through her trials and tribulations that we all have to go through in life, mm -hmm. that the victory belonged to God. Mm -hmm. He was going to bring her through it. She didn't know how. She didn't know when. But she knew she would get through it. And that is what, even when we see them coming in, Bruce and Torres, sometimes we can be that intervention. Yep. Yep. It, it just by going up and saying, how you doing? Uh, and, and when you ask them, look in their eyes to find out. Marvis is my sister, and I know when she's not having a good day. Mm -hmm. I can go to her and say, oh, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I can look at past and say, What's with it today? We, we talk about all these relationships mm -hmm. in the household of faith coming in battered, mm -hmm. bruised. And it, this is the hospital. Sometimes I think God expects us to help be a nurse or a doctor. But we, we bypass that. And there's no reason why my sister going to stay trotting down. And it may be something that I can help with. But I see her coming that way every week. And I, I'm sit, sitting here thinking, I'd be glad when she straightened up on her face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, I, did I ask her what was going on? Did I ask her could I help? Mm -hmm. 
There's so much between our relationships. And I, I believe once we truly experience that relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. it opens up our eyes to relationships within the household of faith mm -hmm. and how we deal with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes just a simple word can brighten somebody's day, be a word of encouragement. Mm -hmm. But so often we miss that opportunity, but we're still talking about relationships. The problem that we often have is that we have the I'm sick too mentality. And the I'm sick too mentality says, I can't help you with yours because I'm sick too. <laughs> and, and, and it's okay to have the I'm sick too mentality, but you got to flip the I'm sick too mentality with the your sickness is probably worse than mine. Um, you might have cancer. I might have a cold. Um, clearly, our problems are not the same right now. You need to be seen by a special doctor. I can just go get an over-the-counter medicine. You understand what I'm saying? He, we're all sick, but there are many of us who are well enough to help other sick people. And even when uh, Tiffany was saying... Uh, person asked me to pray for him, but truth be told, I was going through something myself, but she still yeah. took time to pray for that person. Because being obedient to that opportunity brings strength to the person who, who, was, who was originally weak. A lot of times, uh, as a pastor, I've come in here and I've preached, not defeated, but being weak. And it was as the word went forth, and the word, I saw it helping people. If it didn't help me in that moment, it was after it. Somebody came up to me and said something that caused that word to come back to me. And when you're operating by the Spirit, the Spirit allows certain things like that to take place. That your words, according to the Spirit, will never be wasted. They'll never go out and fall on, you know, any dry ground or stony ground. It's going to always fall because when it's done in the Spirit, the Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, knows how to carry things. And the spirit knows how not to drop you. There's one thing I want to pay attention to before we leave, and it was the word expectation. Um, Sister Ju actually put it in on the comment section and said that coming with the expectation to see the presence of God will take out the fault of people. This is so true that we come to church too full of ourselves. That if we would somehow learn to depend ourselves before we come into the church, then we find ourselves empty enough for us not to hold on to nothing and for God to be able to pour everything we need into us. I can tell y'all, there are many people who have come into this church who I for sure know that God has said, say something. He's shown me in, in preaching and in that moment of speaking who it was for, but he also showed me a closed door. And the closed door wasn't my fault. The closed door wasn't his fault. The closed door was the person not being open to receive what God has specifically had for them. So what are you trying to tell me, bro, preacher? When you go into the presence of God, you got to learn to go in empty. Because if you don't go in empty... God looks at you, Tony, and says, well, where do I have room to pour anything? And now what I love about God is God knows what you need to, what, what, what needs to be cut off from you and what needs to be taken from you. But what God has given us is free will. God will warn you about the thing that he, you need to get rid of or need to get away from. But he's not going to come and just rip them from you. He gives you the choice when and how to get away from those things because what he does is he'll reveal to you his blessing. He'll show you what will happen if you do X, Y, Z. But now, if you don't do X, Y, Z, it's not on God, it's on you. I hear uh, the songwriter said, if I don't get to heaven, the blame is on me. It's not on nobody else. And so, um, when we think about what, what well, and we're uh, cut bringing this lesson to a close, when we think about 
uh, everything that Jesus is doing, I don't want to leave this lesson without touching on this very spot where verse number 14 comes in and says that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bro, preacher, how in the world are you putting a snake and Jesus in the same image? I'm glad y'all asked. If y'all didn't ask, I did for y'all. All right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help y'all with this. Um, after Jesus deals with Nicodemus of being a teacher and knowing what he should know in well enough to have a relationship that Nicodemus is now wanting to have. It comes to a place where, as he talks about Moses lifting up the snake, he was talking that the snake that Moses lifted up at this particular time in Numbers um, is a golden snake that represents um, death and provides um, that of new life, realizing their sin. Um, the people asked Moses to intercede on their behalf, and the Lord commanded Moses to make a bronze snake mounted on a pole and instruct the people um, that when anyone who was bitten looked at it, he would recover. This snake, thank you, Holy Spirit, was a symbolism of hope and healing. So when John writes, as Jesus is speaking, so as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man or Son of God be lifted, Son of Man be lifted, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's the same imagery. What he was saying was just as Moses built this golden image to be a symbol of hope and healing, so must the Son of Man be lifted up to be the same symbolism of hope, healing, and the solution to death and to also provide new spiritual life. So while Nicodemus may not yet have been able to understand Jesus' prophecy that he would die on a cross, John made it clear in other places in his gospel that lifted up is a reference to Jesus' death on the cross. And so Jesus is Jesus goes to the cross, and he says that, that so the Son of Man must be lifted. We often hear that Jesus also says that if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Well, in this same third chapter of John, where John, Jesus has this conversation with Nicodemus, tells Nicodemus um, all of these things, he gets to verse number 16, and he tells Nicodemus, see, we often preach this text as a means to encourage a person that God loves you so much that he gave his son for your life so that you could have everlasting life. If you tie this into the conversation and in the context with Nicodemus, and you hear what Jesus is telling Nicodemus, what Je Jesus is telling Nicodemus starts in chapter, I mean, verse number 10. And he says that Jesus answers him and he mocks him and rebukes him first and says that, aren't you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most surely I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. Verse number 12, though, he says, if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And verse number 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. You have to put it all in context, all in communication. He says all of this from verse number 10. 
He says, and because you, if you would do this, if the Son of Man be lifted up, those who will believe on him would have everlasting life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, through him, the world might be saved. But then verse number 14 says something. Number, uh, verse, I mean, number 18, I'm sorry, it says something. It gives us a, a sure understanding and a combination of this whole ch uh, chapter. He says, he who believes in him is not condemned. Let's stop there real quickly. All it takes is belief, says Jasmine. If you believe in him, it says that you are not condemned. But he who does not believe, is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Verse number 20, though, says, For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Whew. You know what that just really said? I got I to close it. That text really just says that, that as long as it's never coming to the light, you're never going to come to Jesus. That's what that text says. But the moment it's exposed, that will be the only time that would bring you to Christ. The verse number 20 says again, for everyone practicing evil hates the light. And they do not come into it unless what they've been doing in the dark has now found them out. And now you ain't got no other choice but to now come unto subjection of the Holy Spirit and, and fall into sub submission of, of Jesus Christ because you've been exposed now. And, well, maybe you ain't never been exposed. I have. <laughs> it didn't take the expulsion to bring me to God, but it's worse being exposed in God <laughs> just as bad as it is being exposed and letting that expose, uh, expulsion being that only thing that brings you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am. And then we're going to close tonight. Pastor, when you said that, what came to mind, so is that why you hear of a lot of people that's gone to jail and spent time in jail? They found Christ. Uh -huh. yeah, because their sins have found them. <laughs> their sins have found them out. And the truth of the matter is, let's just be honest, let's just be honest. We've often said this, and we're closing, that many of us don't even call on God until we're having a bad day. Go ahead. Okay. This is what came to mind, and I just want to back for a second and reread this. Uh -huh. for, God so look, for, <clears throat> for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Here's the keys to your freedom. Jesus is that key. Yep. You can grab a hold of it, that simple. Yep. You want to be free? You grab a hold of Jesus. You want to stay. <laughs> Why are you trying to mess with me now? You want to stay all bound up and, and hemmed up and, and uh, depressed and, and all locked up and, and can't, can't breathe, can't enjoy just something say, simple? Just say what you really want to say. Spiritually constipated. And, and, yeah, spiritually constipated. There you go. That, that's exactly what it is. You you didn't you didn't you had too much worldly cheese and now you man you, now you you're just, talking you just <laughs> just blessed and just blocked yeah you, you so you talking. got a choice you talking for real now you got a choice you can grab a hold of those keys and say Jesus all right let's go or no no I, I'm good Jesus I, I got this and your stomach hurting and you bowed over in knots and you can't even see straight yep why you want to live like that. Yep. He says, you, you got something to say? I was just going to back up and just even even what he was saying, it's, it goes back to when I had said a few weeks ago, I said, do you realize, you know, that 
you could be the Tylenol to somebody's headache. Yep. But the question is, how long are you going to let them suffer? But in actuality, how long are you going to suffer? Because the answer or the remedy to your life is right there in front of you. But like I said, you, 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 you're, you're, you're blinded by your circumstances. Mm -hmm. You're misguided by your situations. You're overwhelmed by what it is that you're facing. And not pushing all that aside. Because what uh, I think you said earlier about the woman with the issue of blood. What did she do? The only way she got to her healing, she had to push everybody and everything out of the way. Mm -hmm. In order to get to the hymn. She had to uh, uh, basically put herself in a place of being uh, killed. Because according to Jewish custom, she was a second-class citizen, so she wasn't even supposed to be in the mix of men. She was always supposed to walk behind a group of men. And she pushed her way through to get to her healing. And here you are. Church is free. Religion, quote-unquote, is free. Spiritual connection is free. You ain't got to go stand in a box and tell another man your problems. Okay, I'm sorry. I get, <coughs> Here we are. Okay. I don't even want to do Here you are. You, got, you, you ain't even got to be in this particular building. Just open up your mouth. I think grandmama said it like this. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw yourself from me, where? Where will I go? You got that much access, and yet you choose to be locked up, bound up, tangled up in nothing. Because really what you're going through is nothing. Especially when you know who you know, and you know them the right way you're supposed to know them. What you're going through is nothing. But the question is, how long are you going to let your nothing be a problem? And let the one that has the absolute solution solve it for you. It's free. And I'll end here. Because God gave his only son mm -hmm. as an expression of his love to us, we should never come into a place where we question God's love for us. Think about what he allowed Nicodemus to do. He allowed Nicodemus to live in opposition to him for a long time. Nicodemus is old man now, and he's wanting to know, how can I be born again? He says, well, you know, I'm old. But it comes down to this simple thing. Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Believe that the Holy Spirit is real, that he only wants to dwell in you, live in you, rule you, and be that which moves and motivates you. The Bible speaks that those who hate the light will do evil. And they'll do evil unless their evil is found out. But how much do you really love God if you're going to do it until you get found out? Why not love him enough to know that it's already something that doesn't please him and choose to make the decision to not do it because you were found out, but to do it because you have free will now before any expulsion happens to repent, to ask God to forgive you, to be cleansed, and to be made over again. Here's the good thing. You ain't got to change your look for God to cleanse you up. But I can make, I can, I can bet you this. When God cleans you up, you ain't going to even recognize who you look like. Because when God does it, it's a cleaning that happens inside out. 
not outside anymore. That was our lesson for Boeing uh, by the Spirit. Next week, we'll, we'll go. I think, I think next week the title is Living in the Spirit, I think. Give me a little time. I can go find it real quickly. Uh, but I want you all to come. Join us in our Bible study. Um, come be a part of, of everything that we have going on here at Antioch. Um, <clears throat> we got enough microphones now uh, that we can just kind of pass them around. And we do have a person that, that uh, does well with, with making sure that everything is kind of sanitized. And making sure, not kind of, but it is sanitized. Uh, so we make sure that we're doing everything for your safety. We want you to be here every week at 6. Okay, so we're talking next week about the indwelt, uh, indwelt by the Spirit is the title of our lesson, indwelt by the Spirit. Our point for the next few weeks is going to be that the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives affirms our relationship with God. We'll be going to Romans chapter 8. We'll be dealing with Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 17. The Holy Spirit's presence in our lives affirms our relationship with God. But we're talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, the indwelling characteristic of the Holy Spirit. So that's that's going to be, be good doing. right there. I know it, man. Uh, listen, I want y'all to come prepared. So um, y'all write this down. Romans chapter number 8, verses 9 through 17. Look at the entire chapter of chapter number 8. But we're going to look at verses number 9 through 17. Those are the, the, the ones that are going to be printed out for us to look at and deal with. Yes, the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives affirms our relationship with God. 9 through, nine 17. through 17. Yes, ma'am. All right. That's it for tonight. We did not quite make it our two-hour span, but... It was still a great hour and 30 minutes, and I'm glad that y'all have kept uh, y'all poised the best y'all could. I know some of y'all might be a little sleepy. I had a nap today, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, what, is, what, what is that thing you call a nap? I have not yet experienced one. I'm going to tell you, I call it a nap, but it only lasts every bit of a good five to six uh, minutes. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, yeah, that's, that's what it is, a power surge. A that, power surge? I still yeah. have no so not what, what are you talking about. So what happens is sometimes you're awake even when it happens. You know that moment you be like, and you don't even know what just like happened like the last three or five minutes. Uh -huh. Don't even ask me about it. You went to sleep, didn't even know it. Okay. Uh, the spirit just kept your eyes open, kept you together. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got to let, let the spirit have work Have you ever been driving down area? the street and asked yourself how you got from that last exit? Like you was driving, you were like real tired and you. I, I can't up. drive when I'm that tired. You I can't drive? Well, I have. Don't and I know, it, I know the Holy Spirit's don't, don't, real. Don't, don't, don't tell on yourself that much. Oh, no, I ain't. Th no, no, no. I tell on myself. You get sleeping when you drive sometimes. Um, I understand that you're saying that you don't understand what's going on. Minister Tony, you got updates on uh, your I do, and I'll, I'll give them to you. Huh? No, you ain't got to go. This is family. Okay. It's family business. We ain't, we ain't fussing about nothing, so. <laughs> I tell you to cut the camera off if we were fussing. Uh, we, we ain't fussing. Yeah. We love him. We just trying to, you know, handle business the right way. Uh, and it's okay for them to know that we handle business the right way over here at Antioch. They can come on over here and handle business with us. Uh, listen, I'm taking on this new idea that Antioch is, is going to be a buffet feed anybody who's hungry, not physically, like not literally, we're going to be like feeding Don't come people. expecting no plates over yes. here. We, but we so God gave me this idea to kind of put us out there to serve different types of meals, and our meals are Sunday school, Bible study, and morning worship. And so if anybody ever asks you what we eat over here at Antioch, just tell them we eat real good food. They come eat over here every Sunday at 11. 
and every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And they get up early enough, they can come eat what they call brunch at 915. No, that's breakfast at 915. Yep, and the Hebrews Cafe and Fellowship in between <laughs> Sunday school and morning worship. Y'all ain't hearing I me for real. Y'all know. listen. Y'all got to. In this season, the word is creator. And we got we to gotta do it by any means necessary. So I'm, I'm trying to pull them by any means necessary. And I, I even know that the smallest kid on Facebook who has a Facebook page inboxed me and was like, y'all do, y'all do coffee at church? I'm like, yeah, we do coffee at church. Just not in the sanctuary. I thought he probably thought we were going to do it in the sanctuary. So no coffee and stuff in the sanctuary. But we do have a fellowship moment in our fellowship hall. And we, we thank God for, min, uh, uh, I was about to say, Minister Morris. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I think you need another power surge. <laughs> Deacon Morris does a great job at making sure we have our coffee and our donuts every Sunday morning. So y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come. Um, Can I get some jelly filled? You said some jelly. Can I get some jelly filled donuts or something? Or Listen, don't even donuts? don't even think about what he just said. <laughs> Don't even think about nothing he just said. Just come and enjoy worship here at Antioch. We Listen, um, we are looking forward to God doing some great things, but on Saturday we are having our members meeting at 2.30. I need all members to please come. As I continue to study my discipline, I do rec recognize that there's something I've been doing wrong. So visitors of the same faith can sit in on our conference meeting. They just do not have a right to vote. So I will open up the, the, the conference meeting to any potential members who might be looking to plant their membership. You're still waiting on God to speak that one thing, and, and you want to come and, and, and hear about the business that we're carrying on here at Antioch. You can come. Uh, you have a right. To, the, the, the line says you have a right to, to, to aid with us, but you don't have a right to vote. Uh, so let's keep that understood. You, you can come, um, but when voting times come, that's only for uh, church members uh, only because this is the privilege and the, the responsibility we have as church members here at the Antioch Primitive Baptist Church to make sure that the business of the church is handled decent and in order. Uh, with that being said, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think, we think um, this has been a great night and uh, like all good things, it must come to an end. That being said, we're going to ask Minister Pullen to pray us out of here, man. Uh, I like this because when he pray, he got to sit on the edge of his chair. I love it. Now we'll <laughs> oh, he going to stand up. Surprising <laughs> everybody today, ain't you? I love it. Dropping love keys. It. Standing I up. I love it. I ain't going to let you stand by yourself. Oh, you going to. Oh, 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 oh. I ain't gonna let you stand no, by I'm yourself. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up now. Let you know. I'm up. But yeah, we gonna get ready to go. Amen. Can you get the uh, the, the oil out for you, man? <laughs> and it's Ooh. Tin Man over there. <laughs> Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for the good sense of humor here in this building. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But also, Lord, thank you for coming and spending some time with us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for enlightening us, educating us, speaking to us, and showing us something maybe we didn't already know. And if we did know it, thank you, Lord, for bringing it back to the front of our minds so that we can dwell on that thing once more. Thank you, so we can better know you, Lord. The devil wants to steal everything that has been done, this, done here this evening. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't want us to remember it. But we know, Lord, that we put our faith and trust in you, Lord, when we need this knowledge and when we need this encouragement, you're going to bring it back to us. And if you don't bring it back to us at that moment, you're going to put us in a place where we can get some new encouragement and some new understanding and some new knowledge about you thank that we didn't God. already know, Lord. So we want to thank you, Lord, for your ever presence, your, your consistency in our life, Lord. We need it and we can't survive without it. So we thank you for it. We thank you for every breath that we are allowed to take. Thank We're, you, like, we thank you for every correct thought we're allowed to have. We want to thank you, Lord, for it. Just thank you for it all. Thank you for it all. And, Lord, we, we know that you have something for us in the next time that we're going to get together. So when that time comes, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will come 
with cups that are empty enough to where we can receive what you have for us. Whenever that next time we're allowed to come together may be, Lord. And we're going to eagerly anticipate what that is. Mm -hmm. And when we get it, Lord, we're not going to let go of it. Because we know it's a blessing that we needed from you. Thank you God. So, Lord, thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for getting us here this evening, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to, to come together as family and friends and gain knowledge and insight into you, Lord. And in your name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. We love you. There's nothing you can do about it. If you want to do something about it, you have to take note, Lord, we're going to love you anyway. God bless y'all tonight. Drive safe and go in.